Hello and welcome. It's Bill Skolodowski, and it's time for another exciting edition of What's New Wednesday. And boy, when I say exciting, I mean exciting. And here's why. Um, iOS 14 is out. It is ready. You can add it to your phone right now. If that is like techno speak to you, don't worry. We will explain it all in the next few minutes. Now, Needless to say, it's going to be exciting around here for the next few weeks of What's New Wednesdays, and we might even have to come up with either a special edition video or some new stuff for the iPhone Friday. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. But every year, Apple releases a new version of their iPhone software. And if you've paid any attention to this channel or others, you know that iPhone, that, that's the iOS iPhone operating system or iPad operating system. iOS 14 is out and it's the latest and greatest version of the software that makes your iPhone and your iPad work. Okay, so before we get too far into that, let's address a point that some people are a little confused by and that is, well, I have an iPhone 8. I, I have an iPhone 8 plus. You may have a a 10 or an 11 or even a, a 6 or something like that. What's the difference between iPhone 8, iOS 14? Okay, good question. The phone, the hardware phone, is the model number that it is. Whatever it was when you bought it, that doesn't change. It's a 6, it's a 7, it's an 8 like mine, it's a 10 or a, you know, whatever, okay? That never changes. But over time, as Apple updates the software that makes it all work, that's the iOS version, okay? So that's your iPhone or your iPad operating system, the software that makes it all work. And unless you have a very old phone, and I mean five, you know, five or maybe a six, I'm not sure, that you can continue to use the new iOS versions as they are released. It's, it's free, that's downloaded to your phone, you get to use it, it's, it costs you nothing. And, you know, Apple just sends it out as, an, as a regular update. So that's what we want to talk a little bit about today. Talk about the updating process and get you ready to kind of get into the, you know, learning mode here as new um, features. Well, there's a ton of new features. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a little excited about this? There's a ton of new features out there. Lots of super cool stuff. There's no way we can cover them all in one video. So we're going to, like I said, roll them out to you as we go. And that might that might take Wednesdays and Fridays for a while. I'm not sure. But first things first, I wanted to let you know how you can check to see if it's ready for your device and if your device can take the update, okay? So first of all, let me jump over to the, uh, to the, to the phone here. Look, look at that first thing up at the top there, that big red, that's a widget. And if you know anything about widgets, you can now have different widgets right on your home screen. How cool is that, right? So that's one of them, and that's one of the big things that we will talk about when the time comes. But before we get there, I want to make sure that you know what needs to be done to upgrade your phone and get you over to where you need to be. So with that in mind, uh, over to the phone we go and to our usual good friend settings, right there, the, you know, Silver Gear settings, okay? So on your phone, open up settings, and what we're looking for on your phone is the general tab, right? Right there, general, just another gear, right? So tap on general, and then look at right at the top, software update, second one down, tap on software update, and it will look to see if you have an update available for your device, and I say device because it might be an iPhone, it might be an iPad, it could, if you have both, it'll be both. You have, you want to check on both. So look to see, and you will probably see a message that says iOS 14.0.1 is, is available or ready to install or can be downloaded to your device, whatever. So if that's the case and you haven't done it yet, There'll be a button underneath there. There'll be a little line that says download and install, okay? And you can do that anytime you choose. I would really recommend for best possible results that you do it at some point where you're not going to be using the phone for a half hour. I mean, you know, 
at night while you're watching TV or whatever, you know. Plug the phone into power, or if you have a charging pad, put it on the pad so that it's being charged. You don't want the phone to run out of juice in all of this. And of course, it has to be connected to Wi-Fi. So if you're at home, then that's going to be, you know, you'll be connected to your Wi-Fi, right? Um, you could probably do it without Wi-Fi, but it would take a long time and you would probably eat into your data plan. So I'm just going to say, don't do that. Wait till you're at home, wait till you can plug, or your office, wait till you can plug it in to get power to it and connect to Wi-Fi and then just let it be for, like I said, it might take a half hour. Tap on the button that says download and install. You'll probably get another screen with that, you know, you get that usual end user, what is that, EULA, E-U-L-A, end user license agreement. There you go, scroll down, you have to do the agree thing, and then it will do its thing. The phone will download the needed software, it will install it, and it will restart. And when you do, your phone will prompt you, you won't be able to use your fingerprint or your face ID if you have the, you know, newer phone with the face ID. You'll have to type in your password, the actual password that you use to set up the phone. So, you know, make sure you have that handy. Don't, don't, don't lose that or you're going to be locked out. And then your phone will be up to speed on iOS 14. And if you want to check, you can come right back here to settings, general software update. And then when you are done and you're ready and you're good to go, you will get the same message right there that I have your software is up to date. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, so you might be wondering, well, what is that going to get me? And I will tell you right from the start um, that you won't see this big widget at the top. We're going to spend probably a couple of full videos on these widgets that you can now put on your home screen. But let me show you one big thing that you're going to notice. And, and so I don't want you to, you know, like freak out over. I know you're not going to freak out. We're all adults here. But, you know, I want to make sure that you are uh, aware of what the phone is doing now. So we always know that you can slide, you know, screens back and forth and, you know, side to side to get to the different screens that you have with your apps and your, you know, buttons and stuff like that on them. But if you slide one and then, all right, it looks like, if you look way down at the bottom there, there's those two little lights. See the left, I'm on the first one, now I'm on the second one. If you've been with us for any time, you know that that indicates that you have two screens of information that you can look at, you know, full of buttons and stuff. But in iOS 14, they have added another one. So when you get to your last screen, swipe again from right to left across your screen and oh my look, this is the new app library that is on your phone after you update to iOS 14, all right? Now, what has happened here is that the software has gone out and done its best to group all of your apps according to categories. So like you can see, I have you're always going to have at the top, you're going to have suggestions and recently added, which are ones that you've just had, you know, recently downloaded or recently added. But then under that, there you go. For example, I have productivity, social, utilities, entertainment, travel, creativity, uh, information. So I didn't make up those names. The phone does. The software creates the groups. And if you have a group with four things in it, like look at my suggestions up there, I can tap on any one of these apps and it will just automatically start it. So like if I wanted to start up the NFL app and see who's playing the football, I just tap on it and it starts up the NFL app, same as always, okay? But if you have more than four items in a group, you'll notice every group shows four icons, right? Four buttons. But look, for example, at... Um, well, either of the two at the top there, where it says productivity or social, there's three icons or three buttons, and then there's a small group of four more at the bottom right. And that's showing you that there are more than just four buttons or four apps in this group, right? So, for example, my, uh, my productivity and finance there. I can tap on any of the three individual apps to start up that app. 
but if I want to see what all of the apps are in this productivity group, I tap on the, the small bundle of four of them there down in the lower right corner, and it opens up all of the productivity. I got a hundred of them, right? I got a million of them in there. All right. So now I, again, I can tap on any of those and get and start it up. And if I hit the home button or for you, if you have a, a 10 or 11, you just swipe up, you go back to this. Okay. So this is something brand new that you've never seen before because it's brand new to iOS 14. Now we're not done yet. There's one more thing. And that is you look up at the top, you can, there's a search bar and it says app library. Okay. If I tap on that, now look what happens. I have a full list of all the apps on my phone. And by the way, you'll notice that they're alphabetical. All right. So it starts with airmail and all trails and Amazon. And I can scroll down, 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 and then just keep on going. You'll also notice at the far right side there, there's a little tiny row, a vertical row of letters. So if I'm looking for an app that begins with a, a Q, <laughs> I don't know what that would be. I could tap right on the Q. Oh, look, it goes to QuickBooks. Clever. And it goes right to it. At the same time, if I put my finger, if I, I'm going to use my thumb, and I just put it right on the letters, I can scroll. All I'm doing is scrolling. Uh, all I'm doing is scrolling up and down, and it quickly goes through the list. I mean, it just zooms through the list. Of course, I can do it manually too. I can manually, manually, manually up and down. But if I grab on and put my finger on the side over there, it goes much faster through the list. And last but not least, if I'm looking for a specific app. I don't know, Domino's Pizza, I can tap at the very top where it says App Library, and I can start typing it, D-O-M-I, and there it is, Domino's Pizza. You know me and pizza. All right, so that's two of the big, big new changes in iOS 14, and that is your, your home screen's going to look the same. Don't worry, we'll get to the widget thing, you know, in, the, in a coming video, but I just wanted to show you that if you try it, you know, you're going to like, wow, where did this come from? So swipe once, swipe again, and get to the app library, all right? Those little groups put in by the phone all by itself, no decisions on your part there. Now, I can move them around within those groups, more on that later, all right? Don't want to, you know, go too crazy here. And then again, tap on app library at the top, and I get my alphabetical, big, long alphabetical list, all right? Now, is that helpful? Is that going to be fun? Is that going to be good? I'm one of those people that I like a really super clean, not crowded home screen. I know people that have iPhones or iPads and they have pages and pages and pages and pages of apps. And I'm always like, how do you find anything on there? You know, and the answer is they usually don't. They end up, you know, doing the search or, of course, you can always have Siri open an app for you, right? Just by using Siri. But this will give you an easier way to find an app. Now, of course, you have to know the name of it. And some of them are going to be under, you know, uh, some of them may or may not be under names that you remember. But chances are it's going to be pretty good and it's going to be in there. So you know, all the Google stuff, Google Keep, Google Home, Google Maps, Google Photos, got it all in there, right? Now, of course, none of this has taken away anything from Siri. You can still just tell Siri to, you know, open something or do something or whatever, and it will. By the way, and this is the last one for today, because, again, I don't want to just go hog wild here, that they've changed Siri, not in function. Oh, <laughs> I said Siri. They've changed it so that when you, for me, with an iPhone 8, I press and hold the home button, right? And if you have a newer one, you're pressing and holding on a side button. But look what happens if I press and if I get Siri to open something, all it does, look down at the bottom there. That's all that you get is that little logo, that little, I don't know what you'd call that, that little symbol, right? Old days, you would start up Siri and it would take over the whole screen, right? It would be a black screen with the logo down or the icon down at the bottom and it would have the flashing little waveform and all that. That's all gone. So now, that's it. That's, that's, glad to hear it. oh, glad to hear it. <laughs> See, even Siri is glad to hear it. So there you go. All right. That's going to do it for today. I, again, don't want to go crazy with this. So 
If you haven't yet, boy, now would be a great time to head over to the website, wouldn't it? So you don't miss out on any of these important updates because <laughs> we're going to have videos and they're going to be uh, lots of interesting new stuff. So if you haven't yet, head over to the website to BillSkolodowski.com. There it is. And uh, right on the home page, just click on that click me button and uh, get yourself on our newsletter email list. Just one email a week. That's all it takes. Uh, we send out an email that reminds you of the past two weeks, uh, past two videos from the past week, and also uh, has a link to give you the free handout. And there's probably going to be a lot of those coming as well for updates and stuff. So you could print it out and you can have it and you can do it whatever you whatever you would like with it. So there you go. That's going to do it. All right. Your turn. Oh, <laughs> that. Oh, that's another. Well, I can show you that later. That's another one. My phone's ringing. Somebody's probably excited about this and wants to know how it works. Um, oh, your turn, I was saying. Uh, your turn now is to let me know. Are you ready for the update? Are you going to do it? Are you going to run right out and just check for the update and do it? Or are you, gonna, are you one of those people that's like, I'm going to wait. I don't know yet. I'm just curious. You know, a little informal poll here. If you're watching on Facebook, just let me know, uh, you know, with a comment below. If you're watching on YouTube or the blog or whatever, I read and respond to all those comments personally, and I do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Your turn for a response. What do you think? Update or wait? That's going to do it for tonight. Have yourself a great Wednesday and rest of the week. We'll see you on Friday for iPhone Friday. Who knows what we're going to do come iPhone Friday, but it's going to be, it's going to be great stuff. So we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.